In this lesson, we're going to implement attribute-based access control, ABAC. So you'll remember this slide from earlier in the section. And what we're going to do is set this exact environment up. So we're going to have two RDS instances. We're going to have a user called Dave in the DB admins group. We're going to assign these tags to each of our databases and the user. And then we're going to apply a policy. And the idea of this one is to prove that based on tags, we're going to be able to allow or deny access. Now, you'll need to go to your course download at the end of section one. So just download the course download files. Open up the, unzip it, open up the code directory, and you'll find this file called abac-policy.json. So this is the full policy. And what we have here is we have an allow for these free actions. So this user who has this policy applied through a group will be able to describe DB instances, clusters, and global clusters. So that's the ability to see the information in RDS, and that's for any resource. There's then a few more actions. This is the reboot DB instance, start DB instance, and stop the database instance. But here we have a condition. So it's on any resource, but the condition says that the principal tag must be department DB admins. So that's the tag that's applied to our user. So we're going to apply a tag to our user. It's going to check, does it match the key and value of department and DB admins? It's also going to check that the DB tag, so the tag that's applied to our database instance, has the key value pair environment and production assigned to it. If not, then it should deny, because remember the evaluation logic. This is going to restrict access unless these things happen to be true. So while we're on this screen, I'm going to take a copy of all of this code. You don't need to change anything for this code. And let's head over to the console. What I'm going to do in the console is I'm going to go to policies, create policy, go to JSON. I'm going to delete this out and then I'm going to paste my code in. And I don't need to make any changes to this code. Let's click on review policy. We need to give it a name. I've called it RDS limited access. And then let's create this policy. Now we're going to go to groups, create group. Let's create a group called DB admins. Click on next. And now we need to find our policy. I'll simply type RDS L and that should filter out and find my policy. So let's just click on next and create group. And that's done. And now we can go ahead and create our user. Our user is going to be called Dave. He's going to have management console access. Again, set a password, deselect the option to change the password at next logon. And then we're just going to add Dave to the DB admins group and finish that creation off. So that's done. Now let's go over to RDS. Just going to close this. Let's head to the RDS management console. So go down to database and find RDS. On the RDS management console, let's choose create database. I'm going to choose MySQL and let's choose the free tier. We want to use the free tier. We don't need any special features. I'll call this digital cloud prod and I'm going to copy that and use that as the password as well. We're not going to have this database around for long. I know this is not a security best practice. Now, if you see this option here and it's asking for a field, you might find they're grayed out. Let's just include previous generation classes and it will allow the T2 micro. So that's a very cheap instance, which is free tier. Now we can scroll down. Everything else should be the same, except I'm just going to go to additional configuration, scroll down to the bottom and just check deletion protection is not enabled and then create database. So that will take a few minutes. And what I'm going to do is repeat the process and do the same thing, except this time we're going to create our digital cloud dev instance. And again, I'll use that same identifier for the password. We won't be logging in and we'll delete these very quickly anyway. Choose the T2 micro. And then let's just make sure sometimes it seems to enable deletion protection. And let's just create this database. Those databases are being created. Let's go in now and just specify the tags. So I'm going to go to tags for the dev instance, click add tags, and I'm going to put in environment and then development and then click on add. And then we'll do the same for the production server. We're going to go to tags, click on add, type environment and then production. 
and then click add. And remember, we've also got to do the same thing for our user. So back in the I am management console, I'm going to go to Dave, tags, add tags. And in this case, we need to write department for the key and DB admins for the value. Click on save. So let's now go over to a private browsing window and we need to log in as Dave and we're going to see what access Dave has. I'm logging in as Dave now and let's head over to RDS once we're logged in. I'm logged in as Dave into the RDS management console. Now what you might notice is the actions are grayed out for both instances and that's simply because of the status of the RDS databases. So we've got to wait until these are available and then we're going to check whether this user has access to both database instances. Now, just as a reminder, let's go back and look at the slides and work out what should happen. So Dave should be able to perform any action on the production database instance, so the digital cloud prod database instance, but he shouldn't be able to perform any action on the digital cloud dev database instance because that one has a different tag development. And that's not allowed, so that's not being allowed in the policy, and therefore these particular free policy actions will not be allowed. So that's what should happen. Let's go back, and as soon as our databases are ready, we'll check if it works. I'm back in the RDS Management Console, logged in as Dave, and we can see that both of our instances are available. So let's go to Digital Cloud Dev, and I'm going to attempt to reboot this instance. So let's click on Reboot confirm and we get a message here telling us that the user is not authorized to perform the RDS reboot DB instance API action on this particular resource. So that's definitely working. Now let's try on the prod server. So let's make sure that our tags are definitely working for this particular instance. I'll click on confirm and let's see this one's rebooting. So that's definitely working. So that means that the tags are controlling the permissions that are available. Now let's just go back to where I'm logged in as myself. And what I'm going to do is just go to this dev DB instance, go to tags, edit the tag. And what I'm going to do is just change this to production. I just want to demonstrate that this will make a change and it will happen straight away as well. So let's just click on save. We've now changed the tag to production. Let's go back to where we're logged in as Dave and let's go to Digital Cloud Dev. And again, let's try and perform that reboot action. Click on confirm. And this time it goes down for a reboot. So that's quite a simple exercise in showing you how to use attribute based access control. Now we are in the free tier, but I would recommend going back and deleting your database instances. You can only run one at a time in the free tier, I believe anyway. So just go in. You can disable the option to create a final snapshot and then just type delete me, click on delete, and then just repeat that for the other database, click on delete, and then both of our databases are going to be deleted. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I'll see you in the next one.